One morning I woke up to uh, 30 federal agents coming up my driveway and they held a nine millimeter to my head. And for the next nine hours, they searched my place. And at the end of three years, the judge stood up and he seemed a little distraught. And he said, you know, I'm bound by the court, by law to uphold the law. And so I'm gonna do that today. And he had to end up giving us 120 months, which was 10 years in jail. To talk about Humboldt is, it's really like a large family. You know, we moved here on this very piece of property in 1968. You did a multiple of different things in order just to make enough money to get to the next year. That was the goal and cannabis was part of that. As logging started to get overregulated and fishing started to get overregulated, to make up for that income that was no longer, we just added a little bit more cannabis. And before we knew it, most of our income came from cannabis. I started following my mother around as early as 10 years old, really learning from her the different techniques to growing a tomato plant or a zucchini plant or a cannabis plant. Her legacy was a strain called Fruit Loops, which we now call Paradise Punch. And Paradise Punch was created with her and my best friend's mother. And we realized very early that the more tender, loving care that you gave any kind of plant, the better it came out in the end. After Ronald Reagan had declared the war on drugs and they were really making a, a, a point of trying to stop growing in the Emerald Triangle, the increased law enforcement, multiple helicopters in the air, dropping guys down on wires and eradicating weed. And really, as a 15-year-old kid, I was running from them down these canyons and through these creeks. And it was kind of became, even for me, like a cat and mouse game. And that's how it was for a lot of us. But uh, my parents really didn't want to be involved in that. They bought a commercial albacore boat and sailed around the world. And they really followed their love and left me back here on the farm to really explore my newfound love in growing this plant. My best friend and I were growing and we just loved growing. We would get up super early in the morning, show up in the gardens, and really finding the ways that I could grow this plant, that it would express itself even better than my mother grew. And so we were giving those plants birth control pills, rusty nails. We were pulling them out by their roots and shoving them in boiling water, thinking that would help. Any kind of rumor that we would hear that maybe would make them express themselves better, we tried. So while my parents were gone, one morning I woke up to uh, 30 federal agents coming up my driveway and they held a nine millimeter to my head. And for the next nine hours, they searched my place. At the end of that day, they left by giving me a little yellow ticket. And a year and a half after that, they came back with what they call an arrest warrant. And it was a federal arrest warrant. And the federal guidelines, especially with mandatory minimums, were way different than just getting probation for growing in my local county. I was looking at, for a first time, nonviolent offender that had never gotten a speeding ticket before, 10 years to life in prison. I really refused to believe that me and my best friend, who would never hurt anybody ever, could actually go to jail for growing this plant. I had the longest prison sentence in Lompoc in 1996 when I self-surrendered to them. While you're in jail, what I realized really quickly is that the true crime isn't on the person that's actually in prison because every day is the same. You learn to adapt, you know, but not for your family out here, not for my mother that was out there, you know, feeling guilty that something that she taught her son put him in jail one year to the day of me self-surrendering, um, I got a call from the chaplain's office and that's really never a good thing. So when I got there, he shared with me that my mother was involved in a boating, <coughs> a boating accident and that she had passed away. It was one of the hardest challenges that I had to deal with when I was there. I always come back full circle talking about family and friends and community because money will never make you happy and you never can chase money hoping that it's gonna make you feel whole. But a good community, a good family and good friends can, can really get you to where you need to go.
because of that commitment, because of that bond that was created with this community and that trust. When I got back eight years later, I had 50 people here from this community after doing 3,000 days in prison here waiting for me to help me get my life back in order. So they brought me silverware, they bought me plates, they brought me toothpaste, because some of those simplest things that you would miss if you didn't have them, they brought to me and helped me get my life back in order. And my friend Trell, and to understand how hard it actually is to make this happen, took so much care of my Paradise Punch or my Fruit Loop plant that my mother had grown with me for eight years. He handed me that mother plant back after that long. <laughs> and you know, that was a plant that my mom bred with his mother. Started breeding with it and bred it to a strain that my friend gave me, Lemon OG. And that's kind of where Whitethorn Rose came from. Once we tested it with Columbia University, we discovered it actually has over 60 different terpenes and it has over 444 different cannabinoids. Lo and behold, several Emerald Cup wins later, Whitethorn Rose has really taken a life of its own and we're growing over 90% of our farm this year with Whitethorn Rose and actually have two other lifelong cultivators growing Whitethorn Rose this year just so we can um, come up with the supply for this year's demand. Super excited to see where White Thorn Rose goes in the future and who it can really heal and who it can help. And in the meantime, I'm just really enjoying the consumers, loving it, sending me messages, and really sharing something that my mother helped me create is, uh, is I think, doing her legacy justice. I don't like to try to ask where I'm going. I want to ask, how I'm gonna enjoy this day and make this the best possible day I can because I don't wanna to take tomorrow for granted because so many of my loved family have passed away um, at an earlier age. So I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I wake up tomorrow morning and I look forward to seeing a DM on Instagram from somebody that says, I slept better last night because of you.